All right, in this training video, we're going to look at some more Forex. I'm showing you an MT4 chart. The Asian session is going, and I wanted to show you you can trade Aussie pairs and Yen pairs during the Asian session. Now, the Pound Aussie is one of my favorite pairs. I think it moves really well through the European session, Bridge session, U.S. session, Asian session. So let's just take a look at the trade that happened right here on the right-hand side of the chart. Now, I do have the uh, 20 SMA on the chart, but I personally think you can trade this one without the directional and use a standard mode. I think you want to test it, though. In this case, it's down, and it would have worked. You could see that it triggers in right here. It hits the entry, and it comes down, and it's still going. So this is a live trade. It's happening right now. Notice the chop indicator, which means you don't want to go long if you're below the 50 EMA, but you can go short. And if you click on the bar, all you have to do is tap the Alt key, the ALT key, and then it'll freeze the data window. So you can come over here and look on the left, and you're going to see your entry, your targets, and your stop. So if you're getting short at 11.51, really you should adjust that down to 11.49, right? Target one's at 11.43. That's not big enough. It just isn't, so ignore it. Exit that position at the next bigger target, 11.38. So 11.49 to 11.38, that's only 11 pips. So when you subtract spread, what's spread going to be? Three pips maybe, maybe a little more, maybe a little less, depending on your broker and time of day and stuff. It's not even a 10-pip trade. So maybe instead you just take your target one and your target two both off at target three. So you have all three quarters of your position coming off at target three. So that's at 11.33. Maybe you get filled at 11.36. So 11.49 to 11.36. It's a 13 pip move. And then you're trailing on down the signal line. And it can go down for quite a ways. The Asian session will typically give you smaller trades. But you can get a good trade. And remember, the size of the trade is relative to the size of your position, which, of course, should be relative to the size of your account. So let's face it, a 13-pip trade that's 2% of risk is still a substantial profit in relationship to your capital. All right, so keep that in mind. So there's a live trade. It works exactly the same way. You can see it right there. Let's look at another example. Now, I'm not really big on hourly charts because I don't want to have to be monitoring my chart, you know, every hour until the trade's finished. But if you look at this chart, this is a U.S. Swiss. I just pulled it up randomly. You see some really nice trades, but I'm not sure that trend mode is going to help you. You'd have to look at more trades because you got a nice short winner here, for example, but the trend is up. So that tells me maybe you want standard mode. You've got a nice long winner here, but the trend is also up. You also have some trades that just barely tick in and then lose. And so remember, on an hourly chart, this is just a two-tick breakout or two-pip breakout. Maybe you want a 10-pip or 20-pip breakout or something larger for your entry on certain charts if you're going with slower time frames. Okay, it's just something to consider. You have that input in the calculator. It's a nice short trade here. And just to give you an idea, I mean, look at the accuracy of that target three. When that's on the right edge of the chart, of course, you don't know what's going to happen next. But you see that? So even on a 60-minute chart, counterpunch is giving you some nice trades. And there's a small one. Look at this one. Look how accurate that one is. Pretty interesting, isn't it? Just to give you an idea, that, that large trade right there. That was at 3 a.m., so that's your European session, but it got short at 97.29, and look at the targets, 97.01, 96.85, 96.70, some nice targets. Okay, that's if you want to trade an hourly. That's just a random look at a random pair. The CAD-Yen is an interesting pair. It definitely could trade this during the Asian session. This is just a five-minute chart. Let's take a look at some of these current trades. Now, I have the trend mode indicator on here, but you have to maybe determine if you want to use it or not. You will miss some winning trades, of course. If you use it, um, you'll filter out some losers. You definitely have options. 
remember what I said, you can go standard mode and then just not stop and reverse against the uh, moving average as well. So that's another idea. But just, you know, looking at the trades, forgetting about what mode you're in. Here's a good long trade. 17.50 p.m. I mean, that's starting the Asian session, basically. Stops down here. And you can see it's a nice trade. It hits, moves up. It's, they're small trades. The entry's at 92.13. Well, you're not going to go to 92.14 or 92.17 or 92.19. It's just too small. And that's just because it's a five-minute chart during the Asian session. But if you took the trade and just trailed, oh, it's still pretty small. It's only gone 10 pips from here to here. The winners are there, but maybe they're just too small to deal with. The Euro Yen will probably give you better trades. Let's take a look. These are Asian session trades again, very similar to the CAD Yen. And you can see the entry at uh, 135.29. I'm not going to adjust it up to 31. If it was on the 30, then I would push it to 31. If you go to target 3, that's a 10 pip trade. That's maybe the smallest trade you're going to want to take. And it did get to target 3 perfectly, see? So you have to realize the Asian session will be slower, but it's tradable. You can see the winning trades. How about the, uh, let's look at something different. Well, here's a Euro Yen 15 minute chart, and you can see there's some shorts here, uh, but that's not the Asian session. That's the late PM US session. You don't want to mess with that. But back here, during the regular US session at 10.15, you got a nice long trade. Again, Trend mode might not be good for a 15-minute chart. You have a nice short trade here, and that's at 7 a.m., so there's your bridge session. Back here at 3 a.m., that's your, 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 Asian, um, your European session. So European session gets to target 2, almost to target 3. Bridge session, nice trade. U.S. session, nice trade. Again, the accuracy. And then the Asian session, nice trade and the accuracy with 15-minute charts. Random look, just looking at today. So with MT4, you can pull up any chart you want, and you can create a template. So once you in, install the indicators, you go ahead and insert them into a chart, and you basically choose them. You go to Custom, and then you go ahead and choose your X, your NP, CPX, Calc, Chop, Signal Line, and you put them all on the chart, and then you also go and put on your moving averages, right? Moving averages, of course, come with MT4. Let's see, where are the moving averages? They're down here somewhere. You find them. They're in here. Actually, they're up here in the trend section. Go to trend, and then you can go to moving averages. And you put on three of them. Put on a 50 EMA, a 200 EMA, and a 20 SMA. And you, you install all your indicators. And when you do install them, then it looks like that the charts I've been showing you. It's going to look like this. See, there's your chop, there's all your indicators. You could format it, color them the way you want. Then you want to go to template, save template, and then save it. Save it as a, a template, and of course I call this CPX4S, tr 4X trend mode. You might do a CPX4X standard mode if you want a quick and easy way to pull that moving average on and off, or you just leave it on. Back to the Aussie US, I can just now go to template, load template, and grab my CPX. Of course, I made it a candlestick chart, made it look the way I wanted it to look, and then I load it up, and there it is. Not bad. And let's go ahead and uh, get it to real time. So let's look at Asian session. I mean, look at you got a nice trade here. This is at well, this is an hourly chart, so this is a little bit deceptive. That was at 7 a.m., but a nice trade. Look at how accurate. You know, nice short trade, again, hitting a nice target, too. So hourly charts looking nice on the Aussie US, at least today. Obviously, you want to look at a lot of charts. But you could quickly see the charts that have potential. Looking at the Asian session, let's just look at a five-minute chart. I didn't change anything, right? It looks like the trade's too small, but it moved really nicely, and I've taken these trades before, and they're not always too small. 
seven two five six. Yeah, it's too small. That's a trade you're going to ignore. So basically, I don't have the calculator set up right. If I want to ignore small trades, I just open up my indicator list, open up the calculator, edit, and go to ignore small trades. You see it's set to 10? Well, this is a five-digit broker. It's a Wanda. So I want to ignore small trades that are smaller than 10 pips. So now those trades will disappear. Remember, 10 pips to the third target. So now you don't even see the small trades. So even though you're trading the Asian session, they're too small. Maybe look at a 15-minute chart. So the 15-minute chart, it's just triggering in. You had a, a couple shorts that were canceled, and now you have a 15-minute chart, still the Asian session, just triggering in, but it's going to have to make new highs, right? Doesn't mean it won't. Might be long in the tooth. We'll have to find out. But if you took that trade... Push the Alt key, freeze the data window. 7263, yeah, you know, 7272, two, you don't go to target one. You'd go to target two, you'd go to target three, and trail. The trade's large enough. I guess the only question is you take a trade like that into that big high with the strong reversal bar. Maybe, you know, again, that's where backtesting comes into play, and you come up with trade plan rules. So remember, even if you're with MT4, you can go back and just count winning sessions. In, an, in, another video, in another video that I did, I showed you how you can set up a win column, loss column, and break even column, and just count winning sessions and count how many wins, how many losses. And if you're winning most of your sessions, then you can go back and do a more thorough and official back test in your UTA. Now, you know, you might say, well, I don't really need to backtest. I've seen enough. I'm just going to trade it. It's your prerogative. But remember, you have a chance to do this right the first time, and you can change the things you've been doing that haven't been working. Trying to trade, it's not really the same as being a trader and doing things with best practices and being professional. It's always the theme that we push and teach. You want to build that foundation. Don't be afraid to put the time in to do the back testing because it will pay you off it's gonna pay you it's an investment in yourself investments pay you back so you always have to remember that so let's just look backwards here you can see there's a long trade that happened today at 915 there's a US session trade if you're trading the US session you might have gotten into one of these earlier trades this one was at 715 so no that's too early Starting at 8.30, all things being equal, you only had one trade on the 15-minute chart. It was a beauty, hitting all the targets and trailing all the way up. During the bridge session, here's one at 3.30. That's the European session. You know, it might have been a little tougher. Looks like it might have been choppy. This trade here was uh, Asian session yesterday. And it actually there was one that got in here. It was even bigger. Well, that was the afternoon. That was the afternoon, and then you had a new setup during the Asian session. That was actually still the afternoon. So maybe it was this one. Yeah, this one was the Asian session. And it came down and almost hit target two. It did hit target one. 9197 to 9192. Probably too small. Didn't quite get to 87. Well, did it? Not quite. Anyway, you get the idea, you look at trades, you look at charts, you come up with something that wins most of the time. I don't really change too much. On the bigger charts, I might push the entry out. By the way, these are targets that I did not change either, just to show you. Remember I showed you on the other video to go to 1.5x, 2x, 2.5x. I don't think I did that yet. That's one way to make bigger trades and bigger targets, especially when you want to count for spread, as you go into your calculator and look, it looks just the same as what I showed you on TradeStation. And instead of 1, you can make it 1.5, 2, and 2.5. And that's going to produce trades that are more appropriate. You want to do that on your 5-minute charts as well. Look, TradeStation is a more professional platform. It's an easier charting platform to work with. I prefer it. But MT4 charts give you great trades. The trade setups work. 
it all depends on your data provider because the data provider for Owanda is different than the trade station data provider. Remember, Forex is not a centralized market. It's decentralized, and every broker makes their own market. So you want to shop around, get the best spread. If you can pay commission and get lower spreads, if you're trading big enough sizes, it's usually a lot cheaper for you. Your trade costs will be much lower, so that's something to consider. I like Awanda and TradeStation if I'm going to use both because they're both Eastern Standard Time and the bars line up the same. The only thing is, is that Awanda, the timestamp will be the opening of the bar, and with TradeStation, the timestamp is the closing of the bar. All right, now we're watching the Aussie US. We were just talking about this trade. I moved the targets. It's breaking out to new highs. Look. Remember, price action is king. Swing trade, swing levels are broken all the time, and you have to go with the odds that those trade setups are good. Do they all work? Of course they don't. On the last video, I showed you the Euro US. It was a pretty tough few sessions on the uh, European session. You know, we saw that there were some losers and quite a few in a row, and then we kept going and saw that there were winners. Again, you have to look at a good set of data, a good amount of trades to really know if the odds are in your favor. But by and large, they typically are. So you can find enough opportunities with this strategy. There's plenty of pairs with Forex that are going to work really well. And it's definitely the usual suspects. Pound Aussie, Pound US, Euro US, Euro Yen. I mean, I'm sure there's others I'm forgetting. The US Swiss look pretty good. I'm sure there's plenty of others. Lots of opportunities. The Aussie US, more than you'll ever need. My recommendation is choose a good one, work with it for a while, build that trade plan to the point where you're rock solid with it and you know it's going to make you money if you just stick with the rules and stick with the plan, and then start working on a second pair and go slow. Be like a business owner, building your business, ramping up step by step. You don't need to fly off the handle and start trading six pairs all at once. That's somebody who probably didn't do their homework, didn't take the time to build their foundation, didn't do things right, didn't follow best practices. Your odds of success go way down. Remember, you have a great strategy, but now you've got to become a great trader because a lousy trader is still going to lose money even with a great strategy. Never forget that. All right, I wanted to show you an example of a ninja chart as well. This is Ninja Trader. It's a Euro USD and it's an end of day chart. Instead of little plus signs, I put triangles for entries. You could do that. Ninja gives you some options. I put a down triangle for shorts and an up triangle for longs. So it's pretty straightforward and it works the same way. You can see that the short trade doesn't trigger in. The long trade doesn't trigger in. This short trade does trigger and it goes down. If you're in trend mode, you avoid it. If you're in standard mode, of course, you take it. And then it stops and reverses here. The only thing, you know, the stop's way up here. And the stop and reverse, you lose the space between this entry and that entry, this very small amount. And it triggers in and it zooms up and it hits a perfect target two. And it even gets close to target three and then you have a chance to add to your position if you'd like and that's a perfect trade nearly this trade does it trigger in I don't know I only have a two pip entry maybe with an end of day chart you want 20 pips you know you want to really get some confirmation to push through that entry and that's going to avoid some possible losses there's the data window if you look at this setup here you click on the bar tap the alt key and it freezes um, you could change these colors, but the entry is at 14.63 and the high of the bar is at 14.43. Right here. What about this one? Does it get in? The high of that bar is 14.66. So it would trigger in. The high of that bar is 14.43. And it looks like I do have the entries already set to 20 pips because you can see the high of the bar is at 14.43 and the entry is at 14.63 and you could easily just double click on it and take a look and see and I do have it set to 20 because they don't use the extra digit so I put it in 20 ticks thinking it was two pips but it ends up being 20 pips so you have to watch out depending on your broker if I only wanted a two pip entry 
instead of a 220 ticks, I'd have to just put in a 2, right? And the stop set to 2. So you got to make sure you set that up right, depending on your broker, whether you're using that extra digit or not. Okay, but you see a small losing trade. A couple nice winners here. Maybe that gets triggered in barely. A nice long triggers in here. And that's going to also stop and reverse, but again, a very small loss. And that comes down. And look, hits target one. And then it's going to stop out around the signal line. So, uh, you know, maybe you lighten these dots or you make these dots a little less bright. You can change the colors so that the chart looks cleaner. You certainly could play with the aesthetics. You could also put this on a white background if you want. I, I like mine on a black background. And that brings us up to a long trade here, which works out great. Look, it doesn't stop and reverse, and it triggers in. Even though I have a 20 pip entry and a 20 pip stop, which I kind of did inadvertently, like I said, it's hard to break the counter punch. It just seems to work. It's really hard to get it wrong. Really big trade. Not every trade wins. This one obviously, you know, triggers in and comes down. It's still going. Hasn't stopped out yet. Gets long here. And it's still going. So that long trade, this long trade, they're still going if you're in those. But if you're in that one, maybe you're not getting into this one. Again, it depends on your trade planning. It would have stopped out. You wouldn't have been able to get in sync. It would have come down. You would have ended up in that trade. And that's still going because it stops down here. It could go up. It could go down. We don't know. But you see, does it matter the time frame? Here's a look at NinjaTrader with end-of-day charts. We haven't really looked at those yet. But the strategy works the exact same way. And just to round out this video, here's a quick look at the pound US dollar looking at yesterday's market, earlier today, whatever. And you can see an Asian session trade. I'm not recommending the pound US during the Asian session, but who knows? It might work. Here's a long trade here during the European session. And this is a five minute chart. Let's check my inputs. Yeah, I got it set to two pips. The stop needs to be two pips, so I didn't have it quite right. Ignoring 12 pip trades to th the third target because the spread's a little bigger than the Euro US. All right, so you can see one close below the line, two closes below the line. I like to use three closes below the line to cancel the trade, so that trade triggers in and it goes up target one, target two, target three. A perfect target. Random look at a day with a chart we've never looked at before until now so you're done power of quitting bridge session member starts at five this one hit money management so there's nothing you can do there's a trade at 620 that's the bridge session and it's going to stop and reverse and go short now if you're in trend mode you're not going to be able to go short here maybe here you're going to pick it up maybe here it comes the line turns down and when it pulls up, you can grab it. It's probably a news event, the way it looks, but who knows. But you could see, in theory, nice trade. So the bridge session, winner. How about the U.S. session? There's another trade. If you didn't catch that one, there's this one. And that almost gets to a perfect target, too. Look, it just barely misses. It ultimately hits it right there. So 8.30 you have this trade that's right at 920 so there's your first US session trade on the pound US now I'm just copying and pasting I'm not really changing anything this one it looks like it's gonna stop and reverse and it does so it cuts that loss by a third it gets long and it comes up and it hits a perfect target too and goes even higher and hits a perfect target three maybe it just misses by a hair So if you need another trade, maybe you're still negative. I don't know. It seems like you'd probably be positive with a parcel or loss and a full winner. But there's another trade, 11.20, still in the morning of the U.S. session. And that one goes up and hits a perfect target, too. How big is that target, too? Well, it's 53.04 to 53.25 minus spread.
18 pips maybe. And it's still going. Goes higher. Ends up stopping out around the signal line. Maybe not. You'd have to look at the numbers. 53.22, you push your stop down to 53.19. Does it stab down to 53.19? Stabs down to 53.19.1. And you have to work around maybe this little swing level. Maybe you put it at 18. So you could literally stay in that trade, right? Just following the same techniques I've been teaching you all along. And it goes up and then it hits target three. And it keeps trailing higher all the way up to there. The little techniques that I've been teaching you all along the way, you just apply them. They're really important. They really make a difference. But there's a good look at a variety of Forex pairs, all three platforms, the same way, doing it the same, same, same. But the principles are your back testing, building a log of trades, all the things I've been talking about, best practices to put you in a position for success so that you could literally run your successful trading business and ultimately achieve your reason for trading in the first place. All right, that's it.